Before we get into doing head turning with actions, which is one of the most complex things you can do with actions, I did want to point out a wonderful time saver to use actions with and cycling, and that is depth sorting. At the very beginning of the animation section, we were looking specifically at layer animation, and we had a spaceship flying around a planet or a moon. And I showed you how to take a shortcut by simply duplicating a layer and then hiding and revealing that later on. Well, another nice way to work with that, and it is very useful in actions, is depth sorting. And that's where you actually have Anime Studio Pro do that thinking for you. So it becomes very automatic. Objects hide and reveal themselves automatically. So let's see what we have going on. This is the same Lenny we've been working with when we were dealing with our initial actions. But what I thought would be fun is to go ahead and, and have Lenny do the walk that we set it for him. And I fine-tuned this walk a little bit so he stops. And if you have access to the working files, you can open 0718 depth sorting and take a look at this file. What I want to happen to Lenny is right at the end, I want him to seem confused. You know, the, the cartoon typical thing where you've got stars flying around somebody's head. What I've done is created in the layers palette, you'll notice I've created a separate star layer. And the reason for that is I'm going to change this one not only in X and Y space, but also Z space between Lenny and the camera here. It's going to go forward and backward, much like we did with the layer animation where we adjusted the Z space. But there's several additional steps we need to do to make that happen. So what I want to do is make a new action. Let me call it my actions. And something I didn't mention when I worked at the very beginning of the actions, because we were all on one layer essentially, but now we've got more is that you can actually add layers or actions to any layer in your scene. A rule of thumb is to always do it at the very top most level of your scene because then you'll have access to it anywhere in your scene. Let me show you what I mean. If I chose the star layer because we're going to have the star orbiting his head and then click that, you'll notice that the actions we had for Lenny are completely gone. That means to get the star action to play, I have to come down and select the star layer instead of simply selecting the top layer, Lenny, where we see these other actions. Now you can do that, but the problem is when you start creating multiple layers, you've got a character and a lot of things are going on, you maybe have 50 layers in a given group, not having your actions all accessible from one point is a real problem because you can frankly lose them in the complexity of your scene. So, at the main line level, I'm going to insert a new action. And we will call this Orbiting Star. And select OK. Now, since we're in the Actions palette, nothing's going on. There's no animation. I can scrub the timeline. So I'm going to come back to Timeline Frame 1. And I'm going to select my Layer Translation tool. And I'm going to click on the star. Now that gives me an automatic keyframe to keep track of some of the things that are going to be going on. Let me move my Actions palette over and slide this so we can see a little bit. And I am going to divide this scene up vertically so we can see more what's going on. In the open window, I will convert that to top view. So now here's our camera looking right at Lenny. Our star is kind of highlighted. And I'll select the layer translation right now. Now the star is not drawn on the center of the layer. Mm, that's something I did. You can see the difference we'll have when we look at it here and start animating it. So at this point in time, we've got our keyframe with the star over on the left. I'm going to go ahead and advance to time frame six. Select the star actually we'll move not Lenny back. I want to select the star here, orbiting star, and we'll pull that behind Lenny's head. Then at time frame or 12, we'll move it back over. And here's a case where you see the tracking being disassociated with the star, and that's because the star wasn't drawn right on the center. Move this to the front of Lenny, and actually I may move it down just a little bit. And then what I'll do is simply copy the keyframe at timeline one, copy, 
move to 24, and paste. So now we have the exact location. It's just a perfect translation. I'm going to come back to one here and make sure that's set. So I've got a keyframe right on one, I'll paste. So now we've got this, this orbit going on. It's going around his head. That's, that's lovely. Watch what happens. It's behind his head. I'll do a quick render. Oh, it's rendering from the active camera. Let's go ahead and get this active. We can see that the star is actually in front of Lenny's face, although we can see quite clearly from the top view that we've got the camera, Lenny, and the star. It should be behind him. Here is how we fix that. The last thing I wanted to do is to make sure that we've got a cycling action going on here. I'll select the last keyframe and choose Cycle. I want this to go back to time frame 1. We can see the cycling icon. And now when I double click mainline, we go back to that. I'll select the Lenny top layer so we can see what's going on. And the star just follows them around. So the next step then is to go ahead and insert a behavior here. And obviously we don't want this star just following him. I want that to hide at a certain point and then reveal. So I don't want the star to occur until Lenny stops walking. So I'll go to the next keyframe right after this. I'll select the star layer and down here for visibility, I'm going to go ahead and click once right here on the, the timeline. Now you'll notice that everything that turns red we learned earlier hides. I'll click one more time and I'm simply going to drag this invisible keyframe back there and drag the one we just made to that point in time. In our next movie, we'll finish off getting the star to orbit around Lenny's head.